Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Enrique Cano, and I uh, belong to the RD department of FERSA Berins. Termico? It's Berins. <laughs> FERSA Berins, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, in this presentation, I'm going to start showing a little bit about my company, FERSA, who are we, what we are doing. Then I'm going to show you how we implement the 3D printing in our company, how we start in this small world of printing. And then I'm going to show you some samples of what we are doing. Okay? So starting with FERSA, FERSA is an uh, international manufacturer of bearings. For the people who doesn't know what's a bearing, this is a bearing. It's an automotive component made of steel. Um, in each car, passenger car, your car, you are going to have more than 100 bearings from different sizes, different types, but at least you are going to have 100 of them. Okay? Um, we have more than 50 years of experience manufacturing bearings, and as you can read, we are settled in different countries. Our main type of customer is the OEM at tier one, but we also have some aftermarket uh, customers, and also we are making some private label. Um, regarding our business, we are mainly focused in uh, America and Europe. 90% of our market is settled there. And if we talk about the main markets, automotive and uh, commercial vehicle is where we are more focused. Um, if we see these applications, talking about heavy trucks, trailers, uh, light vehicles, passenger cars, and also buses and coaches. Our brains in this type of industry are mainly on the wheels, are mainly on the gearboxes, and also differential. Just some figures about FERSA. We are more or less 40, 450 people. And we can say that every 10 seconds, approximately, one of our bearings is being assembled in a tier one or OEM customer around the world. Just a big snapshot about our global footprint of FERSA. Uh, as I said, we are a Spanish manufacturer. Our, the, world, the world headquarters is settled in Spain, in Zaragoza, which is just three hours from Barcelona by car, or, one hour and a, or less than one hour and a half by train. But we also have different R&D centers. We have different uh, manufacturing places, logistics centers around the world in Austria, North America, Brazil, and also in China. Just talking a little bit more about R&D department, um, we are in a very competitive world. Uh, we are fighting with very big uh, manufacturers of bearings that are 1,000 times bigger than us. So in our case, uh, the, the, the way we found to try to um, fight equally, or at least equally, with these big companies is to create something that we have developed and called Network of Knowledge. What is this Network of Knowledge? We have close collaboration with technical institutes, but also IT. We are also working with uh, universities held in Spain, also with other companies in uh, Germany. And with these technical institutes, what we are doing is getting more knowledge and getting in contact with other companies that they are around the bearings, but not exactly manufacturing bearings. The bearing is made of steel, but we are using oil, we are using grease, we are using plastics. We need to know more about this. We are very manufacturers, but it's very important for us to increase our knowledge in other fields around the bearing. So in that case, we can give global solutions to our customers. It's also, we are not only manufacturing, we are also designing. If we want to design, we know to understand how the bearings are working, how everything is working in a car, different applications. So that's why we develop, and we have this close collaboration with this uh, institute that they are experts in different fields. So with that, we are getting more powerful engineering, and with that, we, that's the reason we are winning some kind of projects, okay? So let's start talking right now about the 3D printing. 
after this initial of uh, who is my company, because if uh, I'm from Renault or from SEAT, probably you all know who are them, but maybe FERSA, small company in Zaragoza, is not so easy to know. Okay? So our first steps in 3D printing were like three, four years ago when we start in the first, in our customers, to see these printers in the laboratories, these pieces in the first, and we start to think that maybe this kind of technology could be something very good for us. So two main concepts arise into our minds. Rapid, fast prototyping, and also no limits for the designing. So how we start with this? Our first step, of course, is let's think some samples. Let's make some samples of uh, different type of uh, elements that maybe we can outsource, see if they are fulfilling our requirements. Let's see if we can, how is these te different technologies, and if we can implement them in our company. So along six months, eight months, we purchase and we make several type of uh, samples and we check if they were OK for us or not. Then, after that, we start searching in the market the different technologies. There were many different types of technologies, different prices, accuracy. So we need to know what's offering the market. We need to know what we want, mix all the information to understand what we really need for us. And finally, what we've done is, OK, make the waste list. Let's think, in case we have a 3D printer, which one will be the first piece that we will make? Which will be the pipeline of pieces that we want to make in our printing? So mixing all of this information, we went to our management, and finally we, we got the, the money to purchase one machine. What we bought at the end is this machine. It's a Stratasys 1 technology FDM. And basically, the, the, the material that we can use is plastic, some kind of ABS. Okay? That's what we have started in this wall of 3D printing. In these last two years, uh, we can more or less uh, divide what we are developing in four lines. We are making uh, pieces on, since we are from the RD department, we are talking about designing also new products for the workshop, tooling, and also teaching material. So you see that we are working in different sides. Start, starting with design, I'm going to show some examples. There are some examples that we are doing. We are manufacturing variants. They are basically for components, uh, inner ring, outer ring, the cage, and the rollers. So we are working in different uh, designs to see if it's going to work or not. Of course, we are not making functional uh, prototypes because uh, what we need is still, if we want to test them, if our customer wants to test them, things like this is not going to work. OK, so it was a great, um, let's say, a stone on the way getting a 3D printer with something that you don't really can show to your, to your customer. It's not the same that you are developing things like this, that uh, someone wants to uh, have a new one, and you can print on 3D printing, plastic, whatever material you can show to your customer. In case they don't like it, you can change and make several trials. But in our, in our, um, in our, uh, with our product, we've, we, we need to give a functional prototype. So we need to manufacture. So we, one of our trends was to find pieces that we can make in our 3D printing helping in our design, like, for example, the cages. Or the one which is on the top, like this one. This is assembly tool that we use for the assembly of some kind of bearings that they are on the wheels of the trucks and trailers. This is made of plastic. And this one is from the 3D printing. And normally, we use plastic from plastic injection mold. OK? Thing is, if we are developing a new reference, a new part number of this type of bearing, and we need to give some prototypes, 50 prototypes, 100 prototypes to our customer, 
uh, make one of these ones is going to cost nearly 20,000 euros because we need to make an injection plastic mold. But the thing is, one, when you are in tier one, when you are working with the automotive sector, projects are not going to be in six months or one year. Some of the projects are going to last two or three years. So what, do I, what you are going to do? To make this investment and then wait three years until you are going to really use it? Or even worse, you are giving the prototypes to your customer, and at the end, the customer is not going to win the project, the final project, or the project is going to be a stop. Who is going to pay that mall? So what we can do is making these things in our 3D printing, and we can serve these to our customer. They can use it. It's totally functional in this case. So we are saving time. We are saving cost. That could be one of the examples. One of the other things that we have used um, 3D printing is, uh, thanks to the 3D printing, we have uh, developed several tools for assembly and disassembly the bearings. OK, we are manufacturing bearings. But why not? We can give other type of products that is going to help on the assembly and disassembly the bearings. We perfectly know how to do it. Maybe our customers, because they think it's just made of steel, you don't have any problem. OK, it's like uh, I'm taking too many things in my hands right now. So because we are w talking about steel, many th people is thinking, OK, if it drops to the floor, nothing is going to happen. This is just steel. If we are making glass, wine glasses, water glasses, probably you are going to take much more care. But in this case, since it's a steel, you don't take care. But the problem is that if the bearing is fails to the floor, it's not going to work properly. If you're not assembling the bearing properly, the, the, the car, the truck is going to fail earlier. And that's a big problem. Because at the end, they will say that the problem is from the bearing. So we need to help to our customers to make the proper assembly process. So one of the tools that we develop is uh, an assembly tool. And we use the 3D printing to have the several steps on designing. We start with this one. We see if it's working or not. We see the problems. Then we go to different solutions to, to make it different. And at the end, getting the final design. So everything is made on 3D printing. It's, going, it's fast. We can learn from the failures. And we can get the final solution very easy. OK? So at the end, we have uh, this product that we are selling to our to our market. That will be the last one. It's what we sell. It's what in the workshop they are using for assembly the bearings. Another example of uh, these assembly tools is what the ones that you can see there. It's not always easy to disassemble a bearing from the application. And with this tool, you can disassemble this bearing in just one minute. Traditionally, it will take more than 10 minutes, probably breaking other parts of the axle, breaking other parts of the application. And with this, you are not breaking anything, and you are saving the axle, and you are saving time. And the most important thing, you are taking care of the worker. Because if uh, I have been not been able to show you uh, a video, but uh, I can show, there is a video that we have in our company showing one worker trying to disassemble this bearing without this type of tooling. And it's uh, very dangerous for them. So 3D printing has helped us to develop tools like this, to test them, and to show to the market. And uh, increasing our portfolio. We are manu very manufacturers since uh, 15 years ago, always selling the same type of uh, product. And since two years ago, we can give to our customers different type of products. Another example that, uh, where we have used the 3D printing is um, this is a, a sensor to monitorize the temperature of the wheels of a bus. Okay? We make this collaboration with uh, a transport company in Santiago de Chile. 
the, the, the city, uh, the, 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 this company has the buses for the city, okay? And they have more than uh, 500, 600 buses going around the city all the time. They have many, many problems with the wheels. They were failing the bearings very easy, uh, less than 25,000 kilometers. They need to change the, the wheels and so on. And they didn't really know what happened. So we put this sensor, and with the 3D printing, we got a solution to, to assemble this inside the wheel so we can we, we were able to monitor the temperature and then check the results. And the results were that instead of having temperatures of 100 degrees, the wheels were suffering more than 150, 180 degrees. What's the problem? You all know probably when you are in your city and you are in a bus, it's just uh, accelerating and braking, small distances. Maybe there is no time for uh, to, keep, to, to get cooler the, the, the brake system and so on. So that's making that all the wheel is getting a lot of temperature. So with that, we saw the problem. We changed the grease, we changed other things. They changed the design of the wheel. And with that, they were able to give a solution and save time and cost. Other examples, they are very, very simple. We, we are from the R&D department, but uh, 3D printing can be used also for the other departments, not only for us. So we have collaboration with maintenance department, manufacturing department, and both together we got solutions just for simple things day by day. It's not very difficult. This is just, this is just for example, a poca yoke system. It's just making that the bearings, this ring, is, can just get inside the machine in one position, not into the other one. Simple. But if you have a 3D printing, easy to implement. If not, takes much more time. OK? And the last uh, examples I'm going to show you are related to teaching. OK? Um, we can. So to the people what's a bearing, um, we make trainings not, over, not only inside our company to, to, to make more knowledge of our people, what they are manufacturing, what are they for, uh, how the gearbox is uh, working, how is a differential, but also we are using this material for our customers. Imagine that if I want to show to uh, one of my customers how is assembled one bearing, and, it, and I need a half bearing. It's going to weight more than 15 or nearly 20 kilos. So difficult to move around the world, difficult to take it away. But if we have a one that has been printed, it's less than one kilo. So easy to move, easy to sew, and even more, we have printed some of them from some of our customers, so they can sew to their people uh, how our, our tools are working, how a bearing is assembled, and so on. So it's another way that you can use the 3D printing. I know that these pieces are not exactly the same as the ones that maybe you have seen with Renault, Seat, different way, different type of pieces, but it's a different way where you can use the, the 3D printing in your company. So just uh, five takeaways of this presentation of uh, 3D printing, it doesn't matter uh, which is your product. You have seen my product, it's a bearing. Not easy to make in a 3D printing, but it doesn't matter. You always will need a one of them. It's going to be a good thing for your company. Another important thing is don't get crazy with the new technologies, accuracy, prices, and so on. Just focus on what you really need, and with that, then, take the best machine that is going to fit your requirements. You don't need a machine, a very big machine, if you're going to make small things. Just look for the one that really fits your requirements. Also very important, make the, week, uh, the wish list. What do you think, what we are going to start manufacturing? Then share this research with other departments in your companies. In your company, it's going to help you to develop new products and probably give you better results. And finally, um, 
once you have one of these 3D printers, don't worry because new ideas are going to arise. Maybe only some people is starting thinking what you can do, but then when you see this resource in your company, more people is going to give you ideas. Thanks for your attention.